What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the Sonoff TH16 Smart Switch. This guy has some cool features and not only is it uh, quite powerful, you'll see what I mean when we get into the specs, but it also can take temperature and humidity readings. So what we're going to be doing is installing one of you guys' favorite firmwares. It's going to be the Tasmota firmware is what we'll be putting on this guy. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please stay tuned because it's coming up right here right now on MI Sperry. All right, guys, so we're going to be taking a look today at the Sonoff TH16. This is just one of the other variants of the uh, Sonoff switches. This one has a humidity and temperature probe. Now, you do have to purchase that separately. I did purchase it. So this is basically the, the I believe it's the AM2301, I believe. I'm going to go get the, get the box for it here. Let's see. Let me grab the little box. Um, Yes, AM2301 is what it is. So this is basically a temperature and humidity uh, sensor. I believe it uses, oh, what's the DH23? I don't know. Anyway, that's this guy. So it plugs into this dude. So let's go ahead and pop this guy open. Get her out here to look at. All right, so this is your switch. So essentially you're gonna be taking this out of here. Once this comes off, that's where you're gonna be hooking up your leads. It's got kind of little push button, uh, little joints to put in there. Um, I don't know how you're gonna get to these ones on the side, so you almost inevitably have to take it apart. So let's go ahead and pop it apart here, and we'll see what the innards look like. Let's see if I can get it to, there we go. It just pops right off. Okay, so we got four screws that holds it down. Okay, let's, let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. All right, so a fairly sturdy looking construction here. Like I said, these are basically push down. Um, you push them down, put the wire in, let it out. Uh, we'll have to look at the little schematic diagram. They have it right here on the front. So when we actually wire this up, but we're wanting to flash this. Now I've already been into this. Yes, I broke the seal on the side, but I've already been into this and soldered on a header for us. So what you have to do initially is we're gonna take these four screws right out of her. So let's get these out, all right. So now that we got these four screws loose, dump those out of there. So it looks like they thickened up the traces on the back side, some isolation slots here and there. Yeah, they attempted to make it look nice. Um, but basically, you're gonna want up here, if you're using the same device, there is four uh, ports that are right here. Um, Basically, you got VCC, ground, and then I believe it's receive and transmit, but it could be the other way around. Easy enough, there's our reset button. We'll be using that to program with, but all you need to do is install just 10th inch uh, header into that, just a four pin 10th inch header. Just go ahead and put that in and solder it in, and then you're gonna be good to go. So that's all we have to do to tear it down to prepare it to be programmed. So let's go ahead and head over to the computer and we'll uh, throw good old Tasmota onto this bad boy. Okay guys, so I've got it set up on our bench over here, got it plugged in and whatnot. So now we need to look at the Tasmoda. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go to, uh, links down in the description, but you're gonna go to Tasmoda's site uh, for their GitHub. And what you wanna do is clone this repository. You just say download a zip or whatever, which I have done right here. I'll show you right here. And inside there, you're gonna find all that information uh, that is here on the uh, repository. The place we're gonna be going to is we're gonna be going into the Sonoff folder, all right? And then inside there, there is a sonoff.ino. Once you open that up, you will be presented with this from your Arduino. Make sure that you install your latest Arduino software. There's also some repositories and things you have to do. I'll show you that here real quick. What you will need to do is go ahead and bring up wherever your Arduino software is installed at, copy all of those libraries into your Arduino libraries folder. So that's what I did. So now, what we're gonna do is you have to configure this. So this is all in tabs. They have all the stuff up here at the top, you can see that. So we're gonna come over here to user config and I'm in the way, so I'm gonna move myself down here. But under user config is where we're gonna go. Let's move myself back here. 
Okay, so once you get into user config, um, you can set the name of your device. So the name right here, Sonoff, uh, you can change that to whatever you want, like living room or upstairs or fan or whatever you want to name it. This is what will show up on your router once it connects up. So then the next thing you need to do, you can configure static IP if you want to. Of course, you can do that later. A lot of this config can be done later. So all we want to do is set up the initial config just to get it connected to your network. So that way it will, uh, you can then work on it later. So all this config can be changed later in the interface. Main thing you want to do, Wi-Fi SSID. So this is your SSID that you will be doing uh, on your Wi-Fi uh, for your home or whatever. Right here is your uh, Wi-Fi password and that's it. It allows you to have like dual ones, but eh, most of us only have one Wi-Fi in our house. Now me, I'm crazy and I have two. I have one for my Internet of Things things and then I also have another one for my home. So now, anyway, so what we wanna do is put together this. Once that's done, we're gonna to need to flash it to our board. So that's why I have set up over here on the bench a USB, basically FTDI chip, USB to serial uh, chip set up with VCC, receive, transmit, and ground. You set that all up and it's basically ready to go, except that there is some very interesting things that you need to do first. First of all, we wanna compile and make sure that uh, this thing's gonna compile correctly. Uh, once we do that, then we're going to need to set up our uh, ESP8266 to make sure that it's it's uh, set up correctly. In fact, we can go ahead and do that now. So what you're going to want to do is when you come in here, you're going to want to choose from your generic board. You're going to choose generic ESP8266, and that'll be in one of those libraries. you got to install the ESP8266 library, which is easy enough, or at least board. You want to go up to your board's manager. <clears throat> boards manager and you'll install the ESP8266 board and then that way you'll have this generic module when you do that you'll get all these other settings the only things that you need to tweak on here is you need to change this I think it's DIO you need to change this to D out and then you need to come down here to the flash size I think it's usually 512 at 64k you need to change it to 1 meg at 64k that should be it speed 115200 all that stuff this should all remain the same make sure your programmer is Arduino ISP and then we should be good to go. Looks like our comp compilation was okay and successful, so we should be good. Now, here is where the trick really comes in. What you will need to do is this C CFG holder. What this is for is this is basically where it's gonna place the config in Flash. If you place your config in the wrong spot, or if you place it in the same spot, then it could get overwritten when you do firmware updates. So what's recommended to do, and there's a link in the description, uh, what's recommended to do is increment this by one. So we're gonna go to 10, from nine to 10, okay? Once we do this, we'll then burn it to our, our uh, chip over here it will burn it to, to our our guy over here our sauna so go ahead and you'll upload that and when the upload is finished you will then come back in here leave it connected and we'll have to decrement it back so that way it saves the config and actually reads the config so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to put in my wi-fi stuff but i'm not going to let you see it okay i have put in my uh changes so we change that to 10 okay and i've got my ssid information in as well so now what we are doing is we're going to upload it what i'm going to do is i'm going to press the button press and hold the button and plug the usb in then once it's plugged in i will let go of the button this puts it into programming mode so now i'll go ahead and i will hit upload and it should upload this time i just wasn't fast enough so here it goes so it's going to go ahead and write the flash we'll pause the video till that's done okay so guys it is finished now uploading so we are should be good to go so now it should uh be loading up to our uh basically to our router now what you would normally do is go into your router. So you would go into your router and what you would do is you would look at your clients list. Like mine, I've got this view list and you'd look in through here and you'd find that sawn off. So let's go ahead and go up here. And there we are. So there is the sawn off uh, TH. So now that we've got that, now what we need to do is we need to configure the uh, temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that module and plug it in. Okay, now I have uh, plugged this guy in. So um, it does reset it whenever you plug it in. So just be wary of that. It does reboot the, the 
the deal. Also, if you've noticed, I'm doing all of this off of the USB power. I have not powered it up. Caution, warning, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> Do not have this plugged in to a 120 volt outlet and then plug in your uh, FTDI chip or USB to serial. It will blow out your USB. So you don't want to do that. That equals bad. So always make sure, do like I'm doing, use the USB to do all the configurations and programming, and then you only power it up to 120 volt when you're ready to just use it, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to configure it to accept the humidity and temperature. So let's go into configuration. And then we are going to go to uh, configure module. And then notice that it has selected the Sonoff TH. That was one thing I forgot to show you. Okay, so here it is. So you've got a section right here. You can do Sonoff TH since it's the TH one. There is a whole section of them. If you go to the Sonoff template dot H, which is up here, right here, supported modules. And so you can type that in, in that spot right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the sensor one. We have to change this to our AM 2301. We hit save says it'll reboot it takes it a few seconds so we'll give it a little bit here we are just had to refresh the page so there we are there's our temperature and it is live so i think if i breathe on it well at least the humidity changed <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. I think we're gonna go ahead and stop the video right here since it is uh, going on for a while now. We'll pick it back up with how to uh, do the MQTT and connect that with Home Assistant. So if you like this video, please leave a comment and also hit that like button because that really helps out the channel. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a patron. Check out my Patreon down below. I've got one of those. Check out the link in the description below and become a patron uh, today. Make sure that when you subscribe though, and make sure you hit that bell icon, make sure and ring the bell so if you don't miss out on any of the videos or updates from me, all right? So check out the links down below to the forum and to the merch store and find the links to me on all the different social medias. And with that, that ought to do it guys. I will see you in the next video.